When you operate a business out of your home, a switch can be like the electricity powering your home. Essential. An unmanaged switch can be a valuable, cost-effective solution for making your office network successful. Let's talk about these options and finding the right unmanaged switch for your needs. So let's walk through the basics. Say you run a small home office. In this case, an unmanaged switch is how you might make the devices on your network, desktop computers, printers, wireless access points, IP phones, etc., effectively talk to one another. If this scenario matches yours, you should consider an unmanaged switch for your network. So what other criteria best describes an ideal candidate for an unmanaged switch? Well, for starters, they're ideal for small businesses and home offices on a budget, as they're traditionally less expensive than other types of switches. And they're perfect for situations where an IT person or department are not in the picture. They're truly plug and play devices when you have an existing functional network set up. If you're working with a small team that needs computers, printers, security cameras, or any other ethernet connected devices to talk to one another, an unmanaged switch is potentially an ideal answer for you, particularly considering the reliable connection to the network when compared against a wireless access point. Though wireless devices can provide a convenient on-the-go connection, they can encounter interference. Conversely, ethernet wired devices tend to be less susceptible to signal degradation due to interference from competing wireless devices in your office. The Cisco Business 110 series of unmanaged switches are a great place to start. They're affordable, they can operate at high speeds for bandwidth intensive usage, and they come with a variety of port configurations, depending on how many you anticipate needing for your own networking situation. And they're either rack or desktop mountable. In addition, the 8PPD, 16PP, and 24PP models are outfitted with power over ethernet capabilities in some of their ports, which means you can connect and power compatible devices, such as IP phones, wireless access points, and security cameras with just an ethernet cable. Keep in mind that not all the ports are PoE capable. For instance, in the eight port model, as many as half the ports can support PoE, depending on the model. So what makes one of these 110 series switches different than the other? When it comes to deciding on the best option, you'll want to identify your ideal port count, whether PoE is valuable to your situation, and which power supply type makes the most sense for the way your network is set up. With a range of 5 to 24 port models, usage is scalable depending on the size of your operation. If you're a team of 10 with multiple devices allocated per person, in addition to shared network devices, you might err on the side of the larger port number. Smaller models, such as 5P and 8P, are designed to sit comfortably on your desktop, while larger port models are designed for convenient rack mounting. If you're a single person operation, a basic five port model might be enough to fit your needs. What makes the smallest model, the 5TD, different from the largest, the 24PP, goes simply beyond the number of ports on the switch. Increased ports also impact the switch's capacity and speed, not to mention the fact that a 5TD can be placed simply on your desktop, while a 24PP will require a closet or cabinet to mount. So, the actual question at hand, which model of unmanaged switch is right for you? Well, for instance, I run an e-commerce business from my home, selling a pretty small amount of inventory, and I work with two other teammates. We've each got a desktop computer, and we share a printer for printing postage, as well as IP phones, and we've got access points set up for ourselves and for guest Wi-Fi when we host a meeting with third-party vendors. So for my home office, I use the 8PPD. It has enough ports to meet my device needs, power over ethernet capabilities for our access points and phones, and I left myself some extra ports that can be used down the road, should the business grow and I require them. But how about you? What do you need to stay connected? This video should have given you just the tools you need to get to the bottom of that question. Just be sure to start with the Cisco 110 series of unmanaged switches, and you're halfway there. Thanks for watching this edition of Cisco Business Basics. Happy networking, friends!